So Melvin Gordon decided today that he was going to force the issue to try and get a contract extension. Now, there's good reason for this for his case, and no, I'm not going to just ramble on about Gordon and leave you wondering why the hell am I doing that for a Dallas-based show, but there is a connection here to this guy, wrong finger, this guy, eh, over here, Ezekiel Elliott. First and foremost, Melvin Gordon, he is in the last year of his deal, and he's only making about $5 million. I want to say like $5.7 million. So he's not making big money, and he stayed in college a little longer than Zeke, so he's a little bit of an older player. This is his best opportunity to get paid. And if you look at his production, his production has been right around that top three running back the past few years. Now, as a rookie, he had zero touchdowns. But ever since that point, it's pretty much been him and Le'Veon, uh, you know, and Zeke, guys like that in that category. His production was great last year. I think over five and a half yards a touch, incredible. He can catch, he can run, he's solid. But there is a problem. Now, his career average, I want to say, is about four. Someone feel free to check me on that. Uh, his career average yards per carry is about four, which doesn't blow you away. But again, as a rookie, they had really no offensive line and therefore couldn't give the support they needed. Now, the Chargers were a Super Bowl favorite last year. They should be good again this year. I think they probably need to do something, but if he's going to look for that Le'Veon Bell type contract with the Jets or you know, something in that wake. And he, he voiced his opinion during the Bell situation last year that, yeah, why would Pittsburgh not pay Bell? He's given them five or six years of everything he's got. He's been one of the best running backs in the league. Why would you not pay him? He's willing to hold out. He is now saying, before camp, which is about 12 days away, either give me a new deal or I'm demanding a trade. That is some serious last-minute... Uh, enforcement of will on his part but why do i mention this because it has everything to do with zeke zeke has two years left in his deal Gurley also had two years left in his deal todd Gurley. now in this particular case if melvin gordon is going to try and get todd Gurley money or a Le'Veon bell money where we're talking 40 45 million dollars guaranteed ooh. That's a, that's a hard pass for me, man. I, I, I'm i serious. Like, I have voiced my opinion on this for over a year. And damn it, it's time that I actually got a little bit of recognition because I saw what nobody else seemed to see. And I'm, I'm honestly not here just trying to pat myself on the back or be very braggadocious. But I saw over a year ago where things with Zeke were headed. And I spoke up about it. And nobody wanted to give me consideration. You can go back. I, I legitimately challenge you. Go back into the archives of my channel and of Law Nation's channel. You will find in various videos me debating law on what to do with Zeke. By which I'm saying you're probably, I think Dallas probably would extend him. But realistically, I didn't think that they should. And I felt like there was both precedent and financial reasons for that. But you have me debating law on this issue. You have me debating Big Game James on this issue. Now, James has since come around, and I give him credit too because he saw he saw this months ago with me as well and kind of flipped to my perspective. Now everyone's talking about this. Everyone in Dallas media, uh, whether it's the sports radio here, the Cowboys beat writers, Dallas Morning News, whoever, even at the national level, they're talking about this. And I saw this then, and I had people laugh in my face at this. You can also find me debating Vach Lombardi. I think maybe a Koye. You can find me debating Ari Timken of 105.3 The Fan. Talking about all of this, I want to say before training camp last year, or certainly before the season really got underway, making the argument for why Dallas should not give Zeke a second deal. Excluding the off-the-field issues, I said that's an automatic given if he has more off-the-field issues and there's another suspension, then wipe my hands clean because at this point, any pop is going to be too devastating to the season to pay that much money to a guy. But I pointed it out. You're paying top dollar at all these different positions. Over $100 million invested in your offensive line. 
Uh, you're now going to pay Dak something like 30 to $35 million a year once his new deal is sorted out, and they got to get him sorted out first because if they had sorted out Dak at the end of last year like they should have, they would have probably been paying him about $26 million a year. Literally from the start of the offseason to today, two weeks from training camp, his price per year has gone up, up to $9 million. You cannot wait for the market to set. The market will only go higher for quarterbacks. For running backs, it's trying to go higher, and it's having disastrous effects, which means it's going to come down. Now, I mentioned earlier Melvin Gordon was not great his rookie year. He had zero touchdowns as a rookie. He did a little better the next year, but it wasn't really until they rebuilt that offensive line that he became transcendent. Now, I don't think he's better than Zeke. I think he's in a similar ballpark. But again, transcendent on a team that can't protect or block for the run does not play as transcendent. You can't pay Zeke something like $17 million a year and pay $100 million along your offensive line. Now, I know, obviously, you have one, potentially how they shake it up. You might have two rookie contract guys in there, but you've invested top dollar at Zach Martin, at Travis Frederick, and at uh, Tyron Smith, so you can't pay, keep paying time, uh, top dollar. And right now, Lyle Collins, who is your right tackle, is top dollar in his position as well. Not like the top guy, but top three, I think, at this point still. You can't pay all those guys, plus now you're paying Demarcus Lawrence top dollar, Plus, you're going to be talking about giving Jalen Smith a new deal soon. Plus, you're talking about paying Amari Cooper in the top three of wide receivers in the NFL, probably. Uh, you, you have to keep Amari. His, the numbers for how he transformed this offense last year, from what it was before he got here to what it became, is insane. He, Dallas went from like a bottom three, third down percentage conversion team to top three. In fact, they might have been, from the time Amari showed up to the end of the season, the number one team in converting third downs. His numbers pop off the page and his his skins on the wall even with Dallas are undeniable so you're gonna pay Dak you're gonna pay Amari Zeke's got two years left on his deal he's trying to force the issue because they see the writing on the wall of what happened with DeMarco Murray now DeMarco Murray had several injuries in his past Zeke has had none of those to date knock on wood Zeke hasn't had any of those to date, and Zeke is also younger than DeMarco was. DeMarco was a five-year player at Oklahoma because he had a redshirt year due to injury. Five years at Oklahoma. Zeke was three at Ohio State, came out at 21 years old. So Zeke, right now, from the time his current contract is set to expire, his rookie contract with the fifth-year option, that's going to expire when he's 24 years old. So if you're giving him a deal, you look at it on paper and you say, well, yeah, if you're talking about a deal where... He's not running out until after he's 20, 27, 28 years old. That sounds reasonable. Uh, you know, it's going to be after that. But his production and the usage rate for him, you can say his second year where he missed six games for the suspension that it wasn't crazy high usage rate. But his use, I mean, obviously, you, you missed six games. You missed like a third of the season. That's going to have that kind of impact. You get my point. It's going to have that kind of impact. But... It's still something where his rookie usage rate was insane. The games he did play his second year, insane. And then last year, very high. Like, he might get a little bit of alleviation now, a little bit with Tony Pollard. And I think Pollard has shown great flashes through minicamp and everything. Uh, a lot of hype about him. I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table. But I view him not just as insurance for Zeke but as another weapon in the offense, particularly in the receiving game, which the Cowboys needed. And I feel like they have yet to utilize Zeke to his full capabilities in that regard too. The point of all of this is, rather than paying Zeke $16, $17 million, I've always made the argument that if you look at the running backs you can get in the first four rounds, Kareem Hunt was, I believe, a third or fourth round running back. I want to say a third, but he could have been a fourth. It's been a couple years obviously for that one uh you can find that kind of productivity around there derrick henry another i know he's not zeke's level you're not going to find a zeke in the you know past the first half of the first round typically but what you can find is a running back that can give you 80 to 85 percent of that production for a third of the price a fourth of the price maybe even 
I mean, seriously, Kareem Hunt, I know his name is kind of mud right now, but Kareem Hunt's productivity was insane in Kansas City, even before, uh, you know, he only played part of one year with Mahomes before he got sent away. So even before all of that happened, he was insanely productive even with, I know it's an Andy Reid offense, but even with Alex Smith as his quarterback. So it's something where you look at that and you say, okay, as we're having all these conversations about, oh my God, the Cowboys are so loaded with talent. Like on paper, they should be a Super Bowl favorite if they can get out of their own way and if they can actually let the reins off of Dak and the offense, maybe. Talent wise, yes, they are stacked and they got a bunch of these big contracts coming up in recent uh in the next couple years obviously you still got byron jones floating out there for what it's worth i think they're gonna let him go probably uh zeke is another one of those that you have to have the discussion now especially after this last incident that he had with the music festival he gets called into the principal's office by roger goodell which by the way roger goodell great great lack of hypocrisy there as you've still done nothing about the tyreek hill tapes the the baby mama and the child the three-year-old child's broken arm and all of that the tapes of him screaming at them terrorizing them not even a call from the office there but zeke bumps a, a bodyguard who goes down like a flop like a european soccer player or a basketball player and you go and call zeke in and make zeke issue this apology on twitter and basically say like all right better not happen again or, if you want to not be a hypocrite at all, you could talk about this, because we always talk about the shield, right? The NFL shield. The shield must be protected and preserved at all costs. Yes! The sanctity of the NFL! It must be respected. Never mind the fact that one of our most face... face I almost said facial owners. That is a double pun for where this was going. But never mind the fact that one of our most public-facing owners in the league, Robert Kraft, never mind the fact that he was arrested in a prostitution sting for going to a Florida masseuse so that he could be worn as a hand puppet. No, no, we will do nothing of the sort on that. But oh, Zeke. Zeke bumped a bodyguard, a security man, at a music festival. Oh! Clutching the pearls over there. Oh! How dare you bring them in have a talk the point of the matter as I'm completely off in the wilderness here the point is that Zeke you can't invest in him even if you don't want to take my arguments to point as I'm talking about all the money and all the guys the Cowboys have to look to re-sign and how many of them that you could still hang on to if you're willing to move on from Zeke take a high co uh, compensatory pick and then spend it in the draft in probably the first three rounds, you can still find quality. Now, I know, obviously, a compensatory pick is not going to be that high. It's probably going to be a fourth-round pick. I'm just talking about reinvesting in the draft, knowing that you've got the pick to help you plug a need on the back end. The point is that I made this argument more than a year ago. I've got the receipts. You can ask Big Game James. You can ask Law Nation. If you want, you can go back through my archive or Law's archive. You can go through this and see time after time me laying out that argument and nobody being able to counter it. Because even though it's not the argument people wanted to hear, it's not the thing they wanted to hear, it's something that rang true. And now... In the past few months, you've got all these other media members, whether it be the radio, uh, the Dallas Morning News, or the national media guys talking about it. And you got some of them even saying, I was the first one to bring this up. And they'll cite February as when they brought it up. February. You didn't. You didn't see it. You jumped on the bandwagon only when it became reality. And it... What I laid out ahead of time was that I saw how it could easily go there and I felt that there was a rational argument to be made for why you don't re-sign. Why you got two more years of Zeke, even if you're not talking about franchising him, you try to bleed out everything from him you can these next two years and then you move on. You let someone else pay him. You basically DeMarco Murray him it's a tough, unfair life for the running back. 
I don't blame Melvin Gordon for trying to force his hand and get his money because this is really your only chance to get money in the NFL is your first contract after your rookie contract. But man, oh man, you just have to understand what the reality of it is. This isn't sour grapes that I didn't get recognition for it. This is just to say it was always something to consider and sometimes you have to take off the fan goggles, the rose-tinted goggles, or in this case, the silver and blue goggles, and look at what reality is suggesting for the situation. I think the Cowboys are still going to try and work something out with Zeke, but I think they're probably going to give him an offer he doesn't like. And because they still have to sort out Dak and Amari, and those two are rightfully so higher in the pecking order, since Amari's uh, competition for his contract has him somewhere in the $20 million route, somewhere between minimum 17 and 22 and then Dak is already in that conversation now between 30 and 35. The longer you wait on those two, the worse it's going to get. I at least think there's a chance that because of the issues with Todd Gurley and his knees, how he might not be the same. You know, they even spent a high draft pick on the, not Tony Pollard, but the other Memphis running back who had like nine yards a carry last year. They spent big to give not just insurance, but a potential replacement to Todd Gurley in that offense and now you got melvin gordon trying to force his way into this conversation in his last couple years he has an argument to be made for why he should be paid around the top five running backs in that regard so if he's getting that argument and you're gonna have another one of these guys jump up and grab uh that new high price point that just further sets the market dallas can't do that for zeke especially not with two years left if you don't want to run him into the ground fine do what you want in that regard, but you're going to have a situation where he's going to hold out. If you don't get him a new deal this year, you're damn sure going to have to do something next season. I don't know what that answer is other than to say I don't give him that contract. And more more people than not seem to be coming around to that conclusion. I just wish they had been there with me a year ago or at least stops pretending they're the first one to have these thoughts, that's all.